You must be shocked at how easy it is. You get it? Shocked? <laughs> Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to install lowering springs on your 991 Porsche 911 in less than two hours. And since I've completed it this side off camera, I already know all the shortcuts. And by the way, some shops can charge up to 10 hours of labor for this job. First thing you do is lift up the car if you have a lift. If you don't have a lift, you can use one jack, although a spare jack will be handy and I'm gonna show you exactly why. And then open up the hood, pop off the plastics and disconnect the battery. We're gonna start from the back and as you can see, the shock is mounted here, which means you have to undo three nuts from the inside of the vehicle. It's right over here. Now, this looks busy, but what I did earlier was you simply fold the seats, you pull on the carpet until the middle part falls, lift it up and then remove that styrofoam piece and put it up top. Oh, and before you disconnect the battery, make sure you slide the seats forward so you have plenty of room. Now, if you see, this is the strut tower and you've got one, two, three, 13 millimeter nuts that need to be undone. Also, you've got this uh, electronic uh, damper cable that needs to be unclipped. Uh, there's a little piece here. You lift up the tab and it comes up. See, this is the tab that you lift and you can simply slide it out. Next, use your favorite 13 millimeter socket to undo these nuts. By the way, to get to the back one, you might want to use a wrench like this. It makes your job a lot easier. And in the back, this is what we're going to undo. This leveling sensor, which is here, this arm, which is here, this arm, which is here, and this arm, which is here. And then at the end, we're going to remove the shock. This leveling sensor, you can simply unclip from the top, and this plastic comes right up. Undo this bolt using an 18 millimeter wrench. Next, take out this one using a 16 on this side and an 18 on the other side. Followed by this one, 19 and 18. I don't have a 19, so I'm just gonna use one of these guys. You might need to push the arm down to get this stud out. There we go. And last, you've got a T55 in the back of this shock and a whopping 27 on this side. The next the idea is simple. We're gonna take the shack out of its mounting point, which means it's gonna drop. And now, you see this arm up here? I'm gonna lift up this arm and slide the shock through that arm. You're gonna have to do a lot of wiggling, but essentially, ah, there you go. And it's out! With the shock out, let's compress the springs using spring compressors. I'm gonna link them for you in the description. Next, we're gonna undo this nut using a 19 millimeter strut tool. You put the wire inside. And the idea is to hold the middle with a nine millimeter, or in my case, 1132, uh, while you undo the outside. <sighs> it might take you a while. With the nut loose, you can take it out, put it in a safe place. You can take out the top piece as well. But now we're gonna take the spring out and decompress it. Before you install the springs, you need to lower this perch. To do it, you lift up this little seat over here and here you've got this C-clamp. The easiest thing to, to do is uh, you take uh, a wrench and you basically move the C-clamp it's gonna squeeze out, or you can actually, let's see if you can use your fingers. Ugh. You can maybe use your fingers. And the idea is to bring it all the way downtown to the lowest possible seat. There you go. And now this seat goes all the way down. Next, we're gonna put the new spring on with the slimmer piece going towards the bottom. And then slowly start putting everything in place. Again, make sure this is seated, and then put this piece now and this piece sits in these grooves you see it right over here and now you can simply put the nut back on and tighten it the same way as you loosened it up and after you take your spring compressors off the assembly is ready now just make sure this is seated right over here so that's one of the other things you have to pay attention to but now uh, let's slide it in lift up this arm and 
it should wiggle itself in just as it wiggled itself out. Make sure these bolts go into these holes and then seat the shock at the bottom. And you know what's next? Tightening everything starting from the top. And then the shock. And then we're gonna do the inner arm first since you have to move this guy to get this bolt in. And last, this control arm right over here. And finally, we're going to reconnect the leveling sensor. And we are done on this side. And on the inside, let's reattach the nuts and reconnect the shocks. Let's put this styrofoam piece in. Uh, first, you slide it on the passenger side. Uh, don't worry, you can push the fuse box in place. And then it slides in on this side as well. And then you bend it back in the middle. You sort of make it into a little sandwich. And we're done. And now the front, you laugh how easy it is. So check this out. Pop this plastic just a little bit, which will allow you to remove this cable here and disconnect the shock. Next, we take a strut tool. In this case, the front is 21 millimeters and undo this nut. And in the middle, we're gonna hold it with a 10 mil. <clears throat> we're gonna remove this nut, put it in a safe place. And now we can loosen up these 13 millimeter nuts. I already loosened them up a little bit, so let's just remove them. Here we're gonna remove this 18 millimeter end link and you might wanna help yourself on the inside because the inner one will start spinning. Maybe not. If you use an impact wrench, it'll not start spinning. But now, to remove it completely, there's tension on this. Uh, we're gonna put a jack under the rotor to lift it up, release some pressure, which will allow us to remove this piece. You jack it up until you can slide it out with your hand. See, we slid out the end link. And now, check this out. The idea is, as we lower it now, we're gonna lower it so the spring as well as the bearing up top will slide out to the point where we should be able to just simply take it out. Check this out. Okay. So we pressed it down. This piece is out as well. And now, check this out. We're actually gonna raise it back up, aim the spring into the hole, because now we can simply unscrew this spring from the top. Check this out. So this comes off, we're gonna remove the rubber boot. The old one comes out, the new one comes in. Here's the new one, you put it in place, and it goes with that narrower end towards the bottom. Let's not forget about this rubber boot. If you're having trouble inserting the connector, you can just simply crunch it up, stick it inside. You must be shocked at how easy it is. You get it? Shocked? <laughs> we can lower the jack now. As we lower the jack, everything goes in. Make sure it's seated on this seat at the bottom here. Okay. And we can start putting pieces back together, starting with this. And next, the actual bearing. When you seat it in place, make sure you also seat the springs in place. You can then lift it up once again and tighten the 13 millimeter millimeter nuts up top. And then we reattach the strut nut. And the last thing we do here is we reconnect the shock. The last thing here is to put the end link back in place. So let's lower the shock. So it goes in smoothly. There you go. It goes in. And we're done. This was nice and easy. 
I'm gonna throw some spacers on the car, uh, do some minor cleaning up, and then we're gonna lower it on the jack to see what the final product looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up later. I'm absolutely speechless. Well, what do you think? This is what the car looks like. I'm gonna take obviously more daytime shots. I'm making an appointment with a, an alignment shop tomorrow, but just looking at it, it looks absolutely fantastic. And on that note, I want to thank you very much for watching. Every tool and product I used, I'm gonna link in the description so it's easier for you to see. And as you could tell, it's a fairly easy job. If you got the tools, and you know what you're doing and, you, and you're brave. This is just a normal car to work on. Uh, it's not much complicated, not, not much more complicated than my uh, M3 or any other car out there. So if you know what you're doing, you follow the proper procedures, you take your time, you'll be fine. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm gonna answer every single one of them. And thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>